Hi there everyone, today we're going to be looking at the discriminant, which is the part of the quadratic formula that helps us to know how many roots a quadratic equation has. So it's this part right here, b squared minus 4ac, when we're looking at the quadratic formula. That is what we call the discriminant, and it's going to tell us if a quadratic equation has two solutions, one solution, or no solutions at all. So let's think about this. Let's say if we're solving a quadratic equation and we get the solution negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 5 over 3, for example. Now that has two solutions, negative 2 plus root 5 over 3 and negative 2 minus root 5 over 3. So that bit there, the 5 bit, is the discriminant. Because that's positive, it's going to have two solutions because we've got two values there. Now what if that was 0? So let's say that that b squared minus 4ac bit was 0. Then we'd get, well, negative 2, the square root of 0 is just 0. So we just get negative 2 thirds. So we're going to get one solution now, only one answer to this uh, quadratic equation. OK, so what about now if we have a negative number for the discriminant? So let's say negative 4. Now, the square root of negative 4 is not something we can deal with in the AS Maths course. We do not know about that thing. It's not a real number. So we say that in this case that there are no real solutions for that quadratic equation that exist. Now it's important to know also what this looks like graphically. So if the discriminant is greater than zero, we can see that you get two solutions for the quadratic equation. And there they are, those two values there. So the graph goes through two points on the x-axis. If the discriminant is equal to zero, only one point. And there it is there. And if the discriminant is less than zero, then there are no points where that quadratic goes through the x-axis. And so that's what it looks like on the graph. Now you also might get a quadratic that's upside down below there as well. So let's look at this example here. State the number of solutions to the equation 4x squared minus 2x plus 1. All right, so this is state the number of solutions, not solve the equation, but give us the number of solutions. If it asks that question, that's a different question from solving it. You just need to use the discriminant. So I think it's a good idea to identify what a, b, and c are. So here a is 4, b negative 2, and c is 1. They're just the coefficients of x squared, x. So the coefficient of the x squared, the coefficient of the x term, and the number sitting there at the end. So put those three values into b squared minus 4ac, and you get negative 12. So we know if the discriminant is less than zero, there are no solutions, no real solutions for this quadratic equation. And you can see on the graph there, it's above the axis. And if we've got an upside down one, it will be sitting down like that. That's what it would look like. All right, another example here. State the number of solutions for the equation 4x squared minus x equals zero. So here a is 4, b is negative 1, and c is equal to zero. No constant term in this one. So substitute that into the discriminant, and we get 1. So the discriminant is greater than zero, so we've got two solutions, and there they are there. There's two values where that graph goes through the x-axis. Okay, in this example here, this is much more like the questions that you're going to get in the exam, where you've got this value of k, so there's a constant sitting there in the quadratic equation, and you need to find out the value of k. So in this case here, there's only one solution. One solution means that the discriminant is going to be equal to zero. So here, a is equal to 4, that's the number in front of the x squared. b is equal to negative 2, the number in front of the x. And c, just that constant term on the end there, is k. So we're going to substitute those three values into the discriminant. b squared minus 4ac equals 0, which gives us that equation there. Now we've got an equation with k in it that we can solve. So minus 2 squared, that's 4, minus 16k is 0, add the 16k to both sides, divide by 16, gives us k is equal to a quarter. So that is the specific value of k where we only get one solution for this quadratic equation. You can see it's sitting there on the x-axis. In this example here, another really similar one, find the value of k or the values of k here such that that equation has two real roots. So two real roots means that the discriminant has to be greater than zero. So straight away in your head you're thinking b squared minus 4ac has got to be greater than zero. So a is 4, b is k, that's the number in front of the x, and c is equal to 1. 
So b squared minus 4ac gives us k squared minus 16 is greater than 0. Now this is a little bit tricky. k squared is greater than 16. So certainly if you square root both sides, you get k is greater than 4, which is true, but we're missing some values there as well. Because think of a value like negative 5, for example. If you substitute uh, k is equal to negative 5 in there, negative 5 squared is equal to 25. 25 is certainly greater than 16, so it certainly fits that equation there, k squared being greater than 16. So it's actually all the k values less than negative 4, which will also make this true. So we're looking for k values less than negative 4, as well as k values greater than 4. If you think of solving this equation, x squared minus 16 is greater than 0. So imagine drawing a graph of x squared minus 16. Uh, the roots will be negative 4 and 4, and we're looking for what are the x values where the graph is above the x-axis, where it's greater than 0. So you could see here, yeah, x squared minus 16 greater than 0. So you can see it's going to be all of those x values on the left of negative 4. There it is there, and all of the x values greater than 4 as well. So all of the bits of the graph that are above the x-axis they're the x values that we're looking for. So in this case here, we're looking at an equation that instead of x, it's in terms of k. So k value is greater than 4 or less than negative 4. Let's have a look at what's going on graphically here. I've drawn y equals 4x squared plus kx plus 1. And at the moment, k is equal to 0. So you can see for k equals 0, there is no solution. So let's just look at what happens as we run this. So you can see as the value of k changes, the quadratic equation moves in an interesting fashion. I mean, if you look at the vertex there, you could actually trace out a parabola of what the vertex is doing. But we're interested in here the values of k where there are two solutions. So you can see if k is bigger than 4, let's, let's, say, let's say right on 4, you can see it's just touching the axis. So if k is bigger than 4, you can see certainly from then on there's going to be two solutions for this quadratic equation. When k gets to 4, less than 4, you can see there's no solutions, no solutions, no solutions for k equals 0. Now if we go around to negative 4, so it's just touching there, negative 4, and then all the k values less than negative 4, there are certainly two solutions. So that shows you that all the k values less than negative 4, two solutions up to there, then all the k values from there onwards also have two solutions. Alright, last example here. A similar thing, we want two real solutions. So we're looking at the discriminant being greater than zero here. Uh, there's just two k's here. So a is equal to k, b is negative six, and c is equal to k as well. So substitute that in. b squared minus four ac gives us 36 minus four k squared being greater than zero. Add four k squared to both sides, gives us that. Just rearrange it so it's on the left-hand side, then divide by four. We're looking at k squared being less than 9. Again, if we just square root both sides, that's not the full picture. So let's look at this. k squared minus 9 is less than 0. Let's draw this out. k squared minus 9, we're going to have roots at negative 3 and 3. We're looking for what are the k values along there where that is less than 0. In other words, below the axis. Below, going below there. So it's all of the values between negative 3 and 3 are where this graph goes below the axis, less than 0. So yes, it's not just k is less than 3, that wouldn't be correct. It's actually values of k between negative 3 and 3, not including negative 3 and 3. So that is the final solution here.